The following is a recorded presentation on the Fifth Amendment to PUD Number 91, the RLT Second Edition. Principally, the actions of Amendment 5 would allow for a third dealership building for a, a Genesis dealership to be located within the PUD, and secondarily, to convert a portion of surface parking in the northeast corner of the properties to a five-story parking structure. PUD number 91 is located in the southwest corner of the city, just south of Interstate 394. To quickly run through the site's existing conditions, currently it is the location for Rudy Luther's Toyota and Jaguar Land Rover dealerships within the city of Golden Valley. These two buildings are separated onto two underlying lots that combine for a total acreage of 13.11 acres. 8905 Wayzata, the western property, houses the Jaguar Land Rover dealership. Uh, that building itself is 46,162 square feet in total area and has a maximum height of 30 feet. 8805 Wayzata houses the Toyota dealership building on the east side of the property. This uh, building is 56,925 square feet and 34 feet 3 inches in height at its maximum point. The site overall provides 1,027 parking spaces, has a total impervious surface coverage of 88.5%, and currently has three curb cuts along Wayzata Boulevard to the south and one curb cut to provide access from General Mills Boulevard. This is a street view of the site from uh, fall of 2020, looking at the Toyota dealership from the intersection of Wayzata and General Mills Boulevards. And here is a view of the Jaguar Land Rover dealership from further to the west along Wyzetta Boulevard. To provide some background, PUD number 91 was created in 2001 to allow for a new Toyota dealership at the 8805 Wyzetta property, although truly development did not begin in earnest until the first amendment to said PUD in 2005. That uh, amendment number one established development plans for both the Toyota dealership as well as uh, the future Jaguar Land Rover dealership on the west side of the property. In 2007, amendment number two was processed by the city. This was a minor amendment that added a car wash addition to the back side of the Toyota dealership. In 2015, a third amendment to the PUD would have allowed for the, an addition to the Jaguar Land Rover dealership for some vehicle delivery areas. However, this was not acted upon by the property owner. And then most recently in 2018, the amendment number four to PUD number 91 added to the Jaguar Land Rover showroom on the front end of their building. The aerial photo here on the left was taken in 2001 and starts to show that change in the design of the property over time. Um, the new Toyota dealership being built at this point, but not the uh, future Jaguar Land Rover dealership. Uh, to the right, you can see that site plan as proposed in Amendment 1, and then on the bottom, both of the south-facing elevations of the two dealerships at the time. Here, looking at an aerial photograph now in 2009, we can see the uh, car wash addition that was added onto the Toyota dealership. Again, Amendment 3 in 2015 would have allowed for a small addition to the east side of the Jaguar Land Rover property. Um, as can be seen in this image from 2018, this was not acted upon by the property owner. And then most recently in 2018, Amendment number 4 allowing for an expansion to the vehicle showroom on the front end of the Jaguar Land Rover dealership. On the left would be an image from 2018 before the amendment, and then on the right, an image from 2020. As mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, Amendment Number 5 principally focuses on the addition of two new structures to the property. Uh, in the center of the parcel in between the existing dealerships would be a new Genesis dealership location. And then on the northeast corner of the PUD, the addition of a five-story parking structure. In terms of details for these structures, the new Genesis dealership building would be 22,500 square feet in area and 25 feet in total height, making it the smallest of the three dealership buildings on the site. Uh, for the new parking ramp in the northeast corner, the total height would be 49 feet 3 inches or five stories and would have a total floor area across all five stories of 30,350 square feet. This new structure would allow for 411 new parking spaces um, these would be used primarily for inventory storage rather than for uh, customer or employee parking. This would bring the total parking on site from 1,027 to 1,199 in conjunction with some other rearrangements of current parking patterns. 
In terms of other uh, changes associated with this amendment, there would be some improvements to the overall hardcover of the site. Um, the applicant plans to preserve trees along General Mills Boulevard to the east of that proposed uh, parking ramp. And overall across the site, the uh, total pervious surface would increase by 2,091 square feet, along with some additional landscaping. In addition to the dealerships, there would also be some changes to the overall signage for the site associated with the new dealership as well as for the uh, ramps branding. Here are some elevations for the new Genesis dealership building with the south elevation on top being the most front facing facade on the structure and also including there a small rendering of the view of that facade when viewed from Wyzetta Boulevard. The east elevation would be the next most public facing. Um, and includes sufficient amounts to meet uh, architectural requirements. Here we have the north and the east elevations of the new parking structure being proposed on the northeast corner of the property, as well as a rendering of that uh, parking structure as viewed from General Mills Boulevard. When examining the requested site improvements, staff has identified some areas of flexibility needed under the planned unit development permit from uh, the commercial zoning district where this is located. For the Genesis dealership, there are three areas of flexibility needed. Firstly, this would introduce a secondary principal structure to the 8805 Wyzetta property that already houses the Toyota dealership. Um, secondarily, the side setback for this principal structure would not exist on an internal lot line between 8905 and 8805 Wyzetta. Uh, the building would effectively sit on that property line between the two lots. And then finally, there would be some reduced uh, parking landscaping on the south side closest to Wyzetta Boulevard. Uh, this would bring the amount of total landscaping roughly in line with that in front of the Toyota dealership just to the east. For the proposed parking structure, firstly, the size of this structure would trigger uh, some flexibility. Commercial zoning does allow three-story parking structures when used to meet minimum parking requirements, but here this is being used for inventory storage rather than minimums, and in any case also exceeds that three-story limit being up to five stories in total height. This also uh, supersedes the 1,000 square foot of floor area requirement we would have for accessory structures uh, being at a total of just over 30,000 square feet. In terms of its location, Typically in commercial zoning, we would require a setback of 35 feet from any property line along a public street. In this proposed plan, however, the uh, structure would only be uh, 15 feet at its closest point on the southernmost edge along General Mills Boulevard. And then finally, uh, architectural material standards do at this point count towards both uh, accessory and principal structures. Um, while we don't have a hard breakdown of structures or materials used in the ramp, uh, it is unlikely that this would meet the standards from code of 50% of the facade being class one material. Jumping now to staff review, in terms of the land use and zoning uh, aspects of these requests, staff overall is supportive of co-locating dealerships here where it doesn't impact site circulation. Um, this does add density to what is typically a pretty land inefficient use in an auto dealership that requires lots of uh, associated inventory parking. Um, in a similar vein, we are supportive of a parking structure here. Um, the use for parking structure means the ability to park more vehicles on site and with a smaller uh, footprint of hardcover versus surface parking, and it also avoids the need to uh, have inventory lots either leased or purchased elsewhere in the city. In terms of the parking ramps height and massing, these are significant even with the retained vegetation along General Mills Boulevard. Um, certainly the Planning Commission or City Council could consider other mitigating conditions for uh, to offset this height and massing such as public art for the ramp or additional uh, vegetated screening on the north side. In terms of the internal lot line and that zero lot line setback for the new dealership, staff is uh, not particularly concerned in this uh, sense. Uh, that internal lot line right now is uh, fairly uh, non-factor in terms of the use of the site. Uh, cars move between both sides of the lot, uh, same for vehicle deliveries. Uh, so it really doesn't have a practical impact other than making sure that those uh, traffic can circulate from one side to the other in terms of 8805 and 8905. 
And then finally, that parking setback in front of the new Genesis dealership does roughly come in line with other sections of external landscaping on the PUD already. Um, staff is comfortable with this reduction given the improvements to landscaping that are shown in that area. In terms of uh, staff review, I would say traffic and circulation remains an area where uh, our engineering staff in particular has concerns. Um, there are a number of sections in this site where vehicle maneuvers, specifically for delivery vehicles, are very tight um, in making their way around buildings, medians, and parking spaces. Um, the applicant has worked with our staff already to address some of these concerns, and has been uh, good at keeping up those lines of communication. However, our engineering staff remains concerned about the margin of error provided to drivers and the degree of difficulty in performing some of these movements. Um, again, the purpose for this is less uh, a concern around private property damage on the site itself, uh, more so in terms of if the turn uh, maneuvers are too difficult on the site. City has seen uh, at other locations and in the past delivery drivers parking in public right of way to unload inventories, uh, creating safety issues on those public streets. Staff is still recommending uh, that these plans be revised further in order to improve these vehicle routes throughout the site. Um, the preferred option for staff would likely be realigning one or more of the entrances along YZ to eliminate some of these sneaking back and forth movements for large trucks. Uh, but at a minimum, staff would need to see some changes to internal islands and parking layouts to ensure smoother movement throughout the site. In terms of the signage proposed by the applicant, it is roughly consistent with the existing signage for both the Toyota and Jaguar Land Rover dealerships on site. And this request to increase the overall amount of signage within a PUD is consistent with some other cases we have throughout the city where a PUD contains multiple different business users that have their own signage needs. Um, staff is conditioning uh, the approval on the submittal of a full signage plan, however, to be referenced in that amended PUD permit to set essentially a PUD cap on signage for the site. In terms of landscaping, staff is supportive of the efforts to preserve trees along General Mills Boulevard, and that's certainly a positive aspect of this plan. Um, the staff did note that the current plan does not provide account of removals occurring along Wayzata that would need to be addressed prior to any type of building permitting. Um, right now, the recommendation is that the applicant would work with our city environmental staff on tree replacement as part of a tree and landscape permit uh, prior to any formal site activity. Um, they also note that this new landscape plan must meet or exceed the requirements of any previously approved uh, landscaping plan within the PUD. In terms of stormwater management, the applicant uh, has submitted a stormwater management report and currently plans to continue using the MnDOT stormwater pond just to the east of this property as its primary form of stormwater management. Uh, the plans do call for some new underground detention tanks to control the volume and water quality being generated on site, specifically in the area around the new Genesis dealership. And then finally, given the amount of earthwork involved, this project will trigger review by the Bassett Creek Watershed Management Commission. In terms of fire safety, our uh, Golden Valley Fire Department staff noted that site circulation is adequate and allows for access to further emergency vehicles to all sides of new and existing structures. They would, however, like to see more developed plans for the handling and storage of electric vehicle batteries, especially given the inclusion of electric vehicle chargers on the site. Uh, for inventory vehicles. Finally, in regard to architectural material standards, a full calculation for the dealership building should be required prior to council consideration of the PUD amendment. In staff size, applying the material standards to the parking ramp seems unrealistic, while other options like public art or additional landscaping would have a greater impact on the ramp's massing and appearance. Moving now to the findings that we use to evaluate every PUD and PUD amendment within the city. Um, starting first with quality site planning. Uh, in staff size, this amendment does further the goals of that original site plan, which were to provide for auto dealers uh, in a clustered location that minimize their impacts elsewhere. Um, with the caveat that we still need to see further revisions to address truck movements, staff is also comfortable with the site plan's ability to manage for those types of delivery vehicles without impacting public right of way. And then finally, the plan does also improve on the provision of green space on site. In terms of preservation, this amendment does increase the amount of pervious surface provided throughout the site and utilizes existing impervious surface areas for its new building additions, uh, limiting the need to create more hard cover. 
The plan also seeks to maintain some of the mature trees on site along General Mills Boulevard despite that new construction in the area. In terms of whether this site plan demonstrates efficient and effective land use, uh, in staff size, the proposed amendment would utilize land efficiently by clustering automotive dealerships within the city and by utilizing structured parking to more densely store inventory vehicles, avoiding the need again to purchase or lease surface parking elsewhere for that need. Uh, in terms of consistency with the city's long-term planning, this proposal is consistent with the current use of the existing PUD and has no uh, known impacts to surrounding properties. And secondarily, is also consistent with the city's comprehensive plan, which calls for the support of non-residential growth opportunities and support for existing businesses and job providers. In regards to the general health, safety, and welfare of the city, Staff feels the PUD amendment would improve those three areas by increasing pervious surface on site and by utilizing its land efficiently as shown. Um, the one caveat again here we have is that further revisions are required in order to accommodate delivery vehicles in order to avoid any sort of spillover effect on public rights of way. And then finally, in terms of meeting the general requirements of the PUD code, uh, staff feels that this amendment meets that intent and purpose in that it achieves a high quality of site planning, design, landscaping, and building materials while remaining compatible with the land uses on site and in surrounding properties. Based on the previously stated findings, staff is recommending approval of Amendment 5 to PUD number 91, subject to the following conditions. First, site plan revisions to address traffic turning movements shall be made prior to adoption of the amendment by City Council and to the satisfaction of City Engineering staff. Second, all vehicle deliveries shall take place on site and shall not take place on the streets. Three, the applicant shall submit a signage plan, including the location, dimensions, and design of all signage across the PUD to be referenced in the amended PUD permit. Fourth, the applicant shall work with staff from Golden Valley Fire Department to develop a plan for safe handling and storage of lithium vehicle batteries. Five, an inventory of existing trees and planned removals should be added to the landscape plan for the amendment. And sixth, finally, a building materials schedule should be provided prior to council consideration of the PUD.